For our next investigation, we head to Hot Springs, Arkansas, just in time to celebrate the holiday. Hot Springs, known for its, well, Hot Springs, has a colorful history. Having the largest Federal Reserve in the U.S., now today is preserved as Hot Springs National Park. It was a resort where people could come from all over to bathe in one of the many bathhouses on Bathhouse Row, to a fire in 1913 that destroyed numerous homes and at least a hundred businesses, to gangsters in the 20s and 30s turning it into a safe haven. Oni Killer Madden fell in love with Hot Springs and stayed there until his death in the 60s. Al Capone would hide from the feds here, same with Charlie Lucky Luciano. Illegal gambling led to a rival police department shootout over it. Look at the camera. Chain's mad because I'm touching this he camera. Always fucking mad. If you ever just stop and look at him, he's mad all the time. Always angry. Given Hot Springs' colorful history, there are tales of the paranormal. The old Malco Theater, where it is said that a woman disappeared during a magic show in the 1800s, and that her spirit haunts the basement of the place. The Park Hotel, where visitors say they feel something unseen brush past them or touch and poke at them. Then you have the Arlington Hotel, but we'll get to that later. There are tales of a murderous ghost that roams the streets at night looking for its next victim. The screams of a little girl who was crushed by a rock slide. A military hospital that was once the house for the criminally insane. The water from the springs are said to have healing properties. And the area around Bathhouse Row has multiple places where you can acquire this healing water. The Army and Navy Hospital in Hot Springs, Arkansas opened to patients in 1882 and was led by the Secretary of War until 1957 when it was handed off to the Army. In the 1960s it was turned into a rehabilitation center. We walked all around this hospital trying to figure out if there was a way to get in but we really couldn't get up even to the front door so we decided to do a burst EVP session but there was just way too much interference uh, from sirens and things of that nature so we decided it was a better idea to just retire that endeavor. After a few more stops around the city, we made our way to the Arlington Hotel to start our main investigation. The hotel was first built in 1875. It was a three-floor wooden structure that had 120 guest rooms. After several renovations, the original building was then demolished to make room for a 300-room Spanish Renaissance structure in 1893. The building was then destroyed by fire on April 5th, 1923. The Arlington that stands there now was a built in 1924. Not only was it visitors that came for the bathhouses that stayed in the luxurious hotel, but also gangsters like the famous Al Capone who would rent out the whole fourth floor for his staff and bodyguards. And he also loved the room 443. The hotel is also said to be haunted. Reports of people in old-fashioned clothes wandering the hallways and lobby before simply vanishing. The ghost of a young girl in a pink dress. A woman in a wedding gown staring down into the street late at night. A bellman has been seen wandering the fourth floor who walks through closed doors before disappearing. The ghost of a man in black seen in the hotel laundry waving to people. Taps would turn on by themselves. We now get all of our equipment set up. 
This round, I wanted to experiment with crystals that are said to have properties to help you communicate with the spiritual realm. I ran one of the antennas for our crystal radio through crystals such as amethyst, clear quartz, celestite, and amazonite to see if this helps us get any extra responses. As we get rolling with our investigation, we decide to start with the spirit box. Um, now, most paranormal investigators will leave the antenna in their spirit box. I, however, removed mine because I wanted zero radio interference. It's my way of cutting out as many variables as possible. With that being said, we do get intelligent response after intelligent response. Um, we are going to play those for you guys uh, only just once, but just let us know what you think. Yeah. It sounded like him. Are you one of Capone's goons? Are you one of his ladies? Did you die in the fire? What does that sound like? Did you die in the fire? No. Mm -hmm. Did you hear a no? Uh -huh. How did you die? How did you die? Drowning? I heard drowning. Did you drown in the pool? Did that say pool? I don't know what that sounds. It sounds like a woman moaning. Right? <laughs> we don't need jokes right now. <laughs> it's a serious work. What's your name? David? Is your name David? Yes. I, I mean, yeah, I'm not crazy in hearing this like this. Y'all are yeah. hearing the same things I am, right? <laughs> I'm hearing it too. We've been in situations where that's not been a thing. How did you die, David? After so many great responses from the spirit box, I decided to turn on the temperature sensor. So on my particular spirit box, there is an ambient temperature sensor on the top of it. Uh, nothing fancy. No temperature readout or anything like that. Just a blue and red light that flashes for cold and hot, respectively. So at this point, we have both the spirit box running and the temperature sensor running. And we are getting some of the most phenomenal um, responses thus far in our entire investigation. You can change the color of this light. You can make it red or blue. The hotter it gets, light it up red. Mm. Oh, wait. My vision for you probably can't tell that it's red. Yeah, that's red, right, though. Yeah, it's definitely red. Mm. Can you hold it red? Hold it red longer than that. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. huh? I don't, I don't 
unfortunately you guys won't be able to tell this due to the night vision camera making everything the exact same color um, the light of the temperature sensor on my spirit box does change color and at the same time we get an intelligent response letting us know that the color had changed but you guys let us know what you hear or make it blue Red. Did you hear that red? That's what I heard. With all that said and done, we decide to investigate the rest of the building and we make our first stop, the 11th floor, where we do a quick burst EVP. We capture some noises that we just absolutely cannot figure out in this recording on this completely silent floor. What do you think it is? Did you used to run with Capone? Old Scarface himself? Here that is again for you guys. As we are reviewing the recordings, we seemingly pick up a disembodied burp. We have no idea where it came from. I'm going to blame Tommy because he doesn't want to be sacrificed. Who burped? <laughs> Did you burp? I mean, I might have. I'm a... Yeah, but I don't remember you burping. I don't either. I feel like I would have held that back, but... <laughs> right? <laughs> he was really interested in your face. <laughs> we also pick up a ton of slams and bangs that we're really not sure if they're paranormal or not. Um, however, the crystal radio does pick up something that we could not define as anything of this world. What do you guys think? One more time for you guys. All in all, we had an amazing time visiting the Arlington, and we got some good evidence. You guys tell us what you think. Uh, drop a follow, send us some flowers, pictures of your dogs, and your demons. You can also follow us on Facebook. Uh, but with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, these are just our thoughts and our experiences. We hope you'll join us next time. Mm -hmm.